In this video, I'm going to share with you one of the most important bits of information in the whole area of women's health, and particularly in menopause, and that is the question that gets asked around the world. Is estrogen good or bad for you? And the reason this is such an important question is because it's so confusing. And I want to simplify this for you so that you can become a partner in your health care. Now, the whole issue started back in 2002. Up until then, hormone therapy was, and particularly estrogen, was the number one prescription in the entire United States. But a study came out in 2002 that was designed to show that estrogen was safe for heart disease and actually helpful. And the reason is, up until that time, it looked like that was the case, but there were no studies that compared hormones to a placebo. They were just what's called observational studies, just looking at the tremendous results that women got who were on hormone therapy. But then this Women's Health Initiative came out in 2002. The design was poor, and I'm going to explain that to you in a few minutes, and it resulted in headlines that were frightening. It showed in 2002, when the study came out, that estrogen caused all kinds of problems and, in fact, may pose a threat to women's health. And the, the results of that were so frightening that women started calling my office early one morning. I remember when that happened. So afraid and so confused, should they take hormones or not? It was just mind-blowing because the reports incorrectly showed that taking hormone therapy, in this case, PremPro in that study, increased the risk of breast cancer and coronary heart disease. It turns out that wasn't accurate, but that's what the data showed. And it was so scary that millions of women threw away their estrogen. And it was so frightening that even the doctors feared estrogen and that the doctors who had been prescribing hormone therapy to most women to help them prevent the risk of heart disease and even if they weren't thinking about that to safely take it because they had terrible symptoms suddenly stopped prescribing it and so women were suddenly toughing it out because they didn't know how to figure it out and that caused Suzanne Summers to talk about the seven dwarfs of menopause. Itchy, bitchy, sweaty, sleepy, bloated, forgetful, and psycho. And I want to explain to you how that happened. Because once you understand it, you'll be able to talk with your healthcare provider and become a partner in your healthcare so that you can take hormone therapy if you want to. And at least you'll understand why you don't have to be frightened for most women. More about that in a moment. The Women's Health Initiative was divided into two parts, the WHI as it was called. It was divided into women who had a uterus and women who had no uterus. And women who have a uterus are placed on two hormones, an estrogen, in this study it was Premarin because that was the number one estrogen in the world, and Provera, which was the only progesterone or progestin that was available to take orally at the time the study started. Women who took, who had no uterus could take estrogen only. And I'll talk more about that in a minute. They didn't have to take a progestin though because they didn't have a uterus. So the study that was published in 2002 was the Premarin and Provera arm and that's where all the confusion started. A few years later there was a Premarin only study, the women who had had a hysterectomy part of the study. And I'll talk about that because it had even safer results. More about that in a minute. We're going to just focus on this Premarin plus Provera part because that's where the confusion began. And the reason that was so confusing is the study had a major flaw because there were so many women taking hormones at the time this study was attempted or begun that the enrollment was very uh, skewed, and I'll explain that to you. They couldn't find women who, aren't, who weren't already taking hormone therapy. So even though the women in the study were ages 50 to 79, 
the women who took the medication were 75% in their 60s and 70s, whereas the women who got the placebo were 75% in their 50s. To make things even more confusing, the women who got the medication were supposed to be well women, but it turned out that that group had a lot of women who were smokers and who had high blood pressure and diabetes and who were also overweight. And all of that are, all of those are risk factors for breast cancer and heart disease. The women in the placebo group, mostly in their 50s, 75% of their 50s, didn't have those pre-existing conditions for the most part. So you were comp comparing mostly women in their 50s with no diabetes, high blood pressure, obesity, or smoking to women who were in their 60s and 70s who were, as I said, overweight, smokers, high blood pressure, and diabetes. And that, of course, changes everything. But what would change as far as results if you start estrogen close to the beginning of menopause instead, instead of waiting until you're 10 years or more out when you're in your 60s and 70s? What would change? And the answer is everything. Because when they looked at that, the risks virtually disappeared. It was amazing. Because in 2002, in the New England Journal, they compared, they went back and redid the results of the 2002 study looking at just the women that started hormone therapy in their 50s compared to women who didn't take hormone therapy in their 50s. So you're matching people the same age. But the harm had been done. By 2016, there were 80% there were fewer women taking hormone therapy than there were in 2002. And that was largely because women were anxious and confused and they weren't sure whether to take it or not. And so they just said, I'll just toughen out. And that's what they did. But they started to take other things instead of hormone therapy because they needed something for their symptoms. And the estrogen void got filled with a lot of unregulated alternatives. Now, a lot of women think that bioidentical hormones that you get in, in compounding pharmacies are are regulated hormones, but they're not. The Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, does not regulate hormone therapy from compounding pharmacies. But today, about a third of all hormone therapy that is taken comes from compounding pharmacies, and about two-thirds comes from the traditional chain store, drug stores. That means that most menopausal women today are untreated. They are just toughing it out. It's really hard for women in and around menopause because they aren't sure what to do. But there's another more sinister impact of this that people don't understand is because with 80% fewer women who are on hormone therapy, it turns out that the new generation of graduates, both gynecologists and primary care physicians, according to the New England Journal, lack competency in estrogen therapy and in treating menopause symptoms. So women come in confused and not certain what to do and the doctors are not able to help them because they haven't had adequate training for the most part, according to the New England Journal of Medicine. Even though professional societies like the North American Menopause Society or the Endocrine Society or the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists are aware of the changes in the data and they support the use of hormone therapy. But let me show you what happens when you reevaluate the data looking at the time of starting hormone therapy. It look, turns out that in 2017, the data was again evaluated, the same data from 2002, in the Journal of the American Medical Association. And what they found was that during the 18 years after the Women's Health Initiative, women who took hormone therapy rather than the placebo actually were no more likely to die of cancer, no more likely to die of heart disease, no more likely to die of any cause. As a matter of fact, women who took hormone therapy of any kind lived two years longer than women who took the placebo 
that's a long ways from something that's causing a problem is actually beneficial. Even though there were a few women who did have breast cancer and heart disease, even those women lived longer or had a better chance of living longer if they had taken hormone therapy. A couple years after the Women's Health Initiative in 2002, the premarin only or the estrogen only part of the study came out. And those are the women who'd had a hysterectomy. So they never took the Provera. They only took the premarin, the estrogen only. They actually had a reduced risk of both breast cancer and heart disease, a statistically significant reduction. So this is way different from what the original study was, was reported about in the newspapers and so forth. And it's what the thing that scared everyone the most turned out not to be true at all. If you started the hormone therapy close to the time of menopause, and that's what I call the estrogen window. And that's the window of time to safely begin estrogen for most women. And for most women, it's usually a decade-long time, and it's usually between the ages of 50 and 59, because menopause usually starts on an average at age 51 in the United States. So between 50 and 59 is the estrogen window for most women. Now, for some women, they're going to begin menopause early. You may be one of them. Perhaps you took, went through menopause like 5 to 10% of women do before age 45. If that is true, then the estrogen window is 10 years from the time that early menopause starts un until at least the time of natural menopause, which is age 51. So let's just say you went through menopause, you went into, men you, you, you know, you entered menopause at say age 45, then you would ideally want to start your hormone therapy sometime near the age of 45. But for sure you'd want to start it within the 10, win uh, 10 years after the age of 45. So between 45 and, and uh, 55, that's your estrogen window. So it's all about starting it closer, at least within 10 years of the time of menopause, not waiting until you're in your 60s and 70s. And that's why I wrote these books to educate the public. The Estrogen Window and The Estrogen Fix. These were best-selling books and are best-selling books. And they explain in simple and easy to understand language more detail and depth about which hormones to take and how much and not only when to start them, when to stop them, how to stop them, how to talk with your doctor about hormone therapy. But the reason this is important is because if you have this roadmap, you suddenly go from someone who's confused and, con and concerned to someone who can, as I've said earlier, become a partner in your health care. So is estrogen good or bad for you? Well, the data clearly shows, now that it's been reevaluated, that if you started in your estrogen window, that the benefits far outweigh the risks. And even if you don't, overall, you're likely to live longer taking hormone therapy than if you don't. Now, I want to be clear that not everyone can or will want to take hormone therapy. And if that's true, it's okay. There are alternatives to hormone therapy. And I talk about that in other videos. And I uh, have uh, many other tools to help women with those needs. But the point is, is that if you want to take hormone therapy, for most women, unless you have a pre-existing condition, like say you have breast cancer or some other circumstance where it's not ideal, the benefits of taking hormone therapy will far outweigh the risks.